I promised you some practical examples for attribute binding. Let's go ahead and cover them now. We're going to start off with an example where we have a list of people represented by checkboxes that we can select and then have each of them people's styling change as we select them. And then after that, we'll go on to look at improving the progress bar we looked at in the last episode. So let's go ahead and just start to build out a component inside of here. We're not quite sure what's going to go in X data at the moment, but we want to build out a list of people. So let's go ahead and create out a div inside of here. And let's have an input inside of here with a type of checkbox. And why don't we just kind of get rid of the name and ID for now. These are going to be for each of the people. So I'm going to create a span in here with each of these people's names. And that's pretty much what we're going to have a list of people inside of here. Let's go over and just check this out. And there we go. That's kind of what we want it to look like. But when we select each of these, we want the styling of each of the selections to change. It's going to be a very simple example, but for now, it's going to give you a good idea as to how to pull these into your actual applications. Now we've not covered iteration yet, but let's go ahead and look at sneak peek at how we might iterate through a list of data that we have inside of X data. So let's go ahead and create out a people array and inside of here, we're gonna have an object with an ID and a name. So that's exactly what we looked at here. We wanna output the name of each of these people. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down. Let's change this to Billy. And let's do one more in here as well. And let's change that to Mabel. And there we go. So we wanna iterate through on each of these divs, each of these people and output a checkbox for each person. Now to do this, we use X4, which as you'd imagine is like a for loop or a for each loop. So we can't directly do this on a div. Let's look at the syntax first. We'll run it in the browser and see what error we get back. For this, we're gonna say person in people. So we're iterating through people. And for each of them people, we're getting back a value person, which represents each of these objects. Let's go over and give this a refresh and check the console. You can see that we've got an error here. Essentially what we wanna do Instead of applying X4 to a div, we want to apply this to a template element instead. So let's go ahead and wrap this entire thing in template and just figure out where we are. And let's apply that here instead. Let's go over, give that a refresh, and there we go. Now we've hard coded the value Alex at the moment, but now what we can do is replace this out with the person's name. So in this case, we can go ahead and say X text person and name. Let's go over, refresh, and we have a checkbox for each of these people. Now let's go back to what we did before when, when we checked one of these. So I'm gonna pull this down to a new line just so we can focus on adding these to the inputs. When we go ahead and bind these in, we wanna say X model and choose some kind of array of selected people. So let's go ahead and say X model selected. Now, of course, what we need to do is add a value to this. Now, if we think about the way that we've done this, we're iterating through these people. We've already looked at an example of binding to an array based on the value of a checkbox. But what we can't do here is say person.id, for example. That's not quite going to work. Now, if I go ahead and just click on these, you can see, first of all, the functionality here doesn't quite work. But second of all, if we were to go ahead and use a span here, to output the list of selected values that we have, we're gonna see something really odd. We see person.id, so it's the literal value that we've used inside of here. So binding is really important here because what we can now do is say x bind value and bind it to the actual ID from this person object. So notice the difference now when we check this, you can see that we actually get the value of each of these people. So although we've already kind of covered this, this is a much more dynamic example where we have a predefined list of people, perhaps this has come from an API, and then we actually iterate through each of these rather than manually building this up. Now, what we also want to do with each of these inputs is make these unique. At the moment, these are non-unique. So for example, the ID in here would be pretty important. So we could go ahead and X bind in the ID, and we could set this to person underscore, and then the person's name, person.id, make sure we cover this in back ticks and there we go. Now, if we give this a refresh and just come over here, notice that for each of these inputs, we've got the ID now set to person underscore one, the second one person underscore two and so on and so forth. 
So we're just using bind here liberally to build up what we need. So finally, let's make sure that when we do select these people, we highlight these maybe in bold or give them a color to show that these have been selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this X text for selected here, and let's focus on that now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring back some really rough styling at the top of the page, and let's just set font weight to bold here, and actually spell weight correctly. And let's go down and bind this in now, if this has been, or if this particular person has been selected. So again, we know that we can use X bind class here, and we can bind the bold class in if a particular expression comes back as true. That's made them all bold, of course, because I've just hard coded true in. Now, how are we gonna determine this? Because if we look up here, we have a list of people, but we also have just a selected array. So we can't really just output a really simple expression. Well, in this case, we're just gonna say selected and just use include, which is just a JavaScript method on an array, and say person.id, because we're storing these IDs in here that's gonna work nicely, or will it? Let's go over and have a look. So I'm gonna go ahead and check these, and notice that the functionality that we've just introduced isn't quite working. Now the reason for this is selected is an array of uh, the IDs that we've chosen, but they are actually arrays of strings. Now the reason for that is because each of these people being output here with the value is a string, this is a string, so when we bind it to this array, we actually get strings back. Now there's a couple of ways around this. The first way is to cast the number that we are checking here directly within includes in that list of selected strings to a string, or we could control how the data gets put into selected, which is probably the better option. The first option is to say to string at the end of ID, and if we check this out now, you can see that that now works because we're comparing a string with a string. But this method is a little bit messy. We are trying to kind of fiddle what we're comparing here. So the best way to do this would be to add a modifier to model, which are all listed out in the Alpine documentation if you need to learn more about these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the number modifier. So what this will do is it will take the string value, person ID, and as it puts it into selected, it's gonna make sure it's represented as a number. Now we don't need to cast this to a string when we check inside of includes. Let's check out the difference and you can see it still works nicely. Okay, let's go over and look at another example and that is the progress bar that we kind of looked at in the last part, but this time we're gonna build out our own styled progress bar. So let's start by just building the structure of this out. This is gonna have an overall wrapper with perhaps a progress class and then inside of here we're going to have the inner part of this so this is the kind of outer part of the progress bar with the background and then we're going to have a progress inner and again we're just going to create some really simple styles up here let's just do these above here just to keep things really simple but of course feel free to use any kind of ui library that you're using so for the outer progress, let's say that this has a fixed height of 10 pixels, and let's give this a fixed width just because of the way that we're working on screen, and let's give this a background color of just a light gray. Now for the progress inner, this is gonna have again a height of 10 pixels to match the parent, but we're gonna have a background color that we want to see represented as the actual progress bar. So let's set this to just slate gray maybe, just to make this a little bit nicer. So that should give us a nice progress bar but for this we'd want to manually set the style because the style needs to change based on a JavaScript value so for example if I set the width of this to 50 pixels let's go over or 50% rather let's go over and see what this looks like there we go there is our simple progress bar so we now want to bind in the style here based on the value that we have inside of X data for our progress so let's set the progress here to just 50, just to kick things off. And let's look at binding this in. So we know we use X bind style. And in here, we can just take this entire string, add it in there, and then go ahead and pass in with interpolation the progress that we have. That's gonna not change whatsoever. Of course, we still see that flicker while Alpine loads and applies this, but it works as we would expect. Now, let's go ahead and just bring this up because we don't need that. 
and let's go ahead and create out a button in here to increment this now if we were building a progress bar in real life we would probably just have this independent you'd probably have some kind of event which dispatches the progress update we're not quite going to cover that yet but for now let's go ahead and wrap this in a kind of outer div and have that as the alpine component and then we can just create a button in here just to play around so let's create a button and when we click on this we're going to go ahead and increment this so let's set the progress to progress in fact let's just increment it with one and let's say increment and that should do the trick let's go over and check it out so when we increment it sure enough it works and of course we would probably have a starting value of zero so that works really nicely you'd probably want to refactor this to some kind of method so for example you would probably have some kind of increment method in here which set the progress internally and incremented that internally and then from here you wouldn't have to actually uh, do the operation like this you would just call the method and that would handle everything so just with that refactor that work in exactly the same way so let's just go and fix up the comma on there and there we go works in exactly the same way we could even have fun with this and have this increment on its own so for example we could initialize this component and we haven't looked at that concept yet but essentially what you can do inside of xdata is you use an init method and that's going to go ahead and do something when this component initializes so let's just console log out init and let's go over and look at our console you can see that init has been called so just by introducing an init method this is always going to run so for example, what we could do is we could set some kind of timeout or interval in here. And for that interval, let's say that runs every 500 milliseconds, we could call the increment method from within that interval. And of course, what that's gonna do is increment that every half a second. Let's speed that up a bit. So let's set this to 100. And there you go. You can see that that progress bar is going all the way along now of course this is progressing up to the point where it goes outside of the progress bar so what you'd probably want to do is introduce some kind of max to this let's not look at that now because we're going to look at plenty more examples later but just as a kind of hint what you might want to do is stop this interval if it does get to 100 so for example you could say let interval equal interval and then inside of here you could check the progress so you could say if the progress is equal to or greater than or equal to 100 then you want to go ahead and clear that interval out to stop that incrementing anymore if you wanted it to go past 100 percent this wouldn't be the method that you want to use but again we're not going to get too far into this just a basic check inside of there to stop that if it gets to 100 let's wait for this and see if it works and it's nearly at the end and it should just stop now it is not quite right but again you can go ahead and fiddle around with this to make this work how you want